Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and I'm back with another video. This one will be focused around how to deal with the fact that we do not have a free health regeneration from Speed Demon Life Giver combo anymore. And it is a problem for some of you as I read the comments I know about it and I will let you know what I'm doing to deal with that, starting from the best method, going down to the worst ones, but all of them will be working. But before we start, I have a new Patreon that I would like to welcome. It's Steve Abbey One. Welcome into Turtles Army. Thank you for your support. And now to the point of this video. As you can see, I'm holding shotgun and I'm not a shotgun build. If you see, take a look on my perks. There is nothing for shotguns really. Absolutely zero shotgun related. Perks. Why is that? This shotgun is a magic shotgun and it's a vampire with Vats hit chance. Vats hit chance is a magic effect and that's my best strategy. Regardless of your build, use shotgun in Vats to get the magic damage for your farming and everything you are doing on daily basis that seems to be working the best. You will not die. You don't even need to sneak. As you can see, this is not suppressed. If you are a sneak build, then you probably don't need any form of regeneration. That's why I'm going for Rambo style, no suppressor, just go and smash enemies. And I will demonstrate this. Let me quickly explain for those of you that maybe missed my video about magic weapons, what you need. You need any shotgun that's a vampire with one of the magic effects. That's hit chance like in here, or limb damage, or bash damage. If you don't have or cannot find any shotgun with those effects, your other option is to find any vampire shotgun, even if this will be a one star, and find a piece of armor that come with this effect on third star. Reduces damage while blocking by 15%. This will make your shotgun magic without having a magic effect on shotgun. Okay, that's quick introduction. Now let me demonstrate how it works. Okay, let's check if we have any super mutants in here. I think so. I can see one of them, another one. And they're not interested. You should be shooting me. How I supposed to demonstrate it? Can you shoot me? Oh, now you can see. It's shooting me. I'm shooting back. And as you can see, my health is going back up. No problem. I can tank it and even heal whatever they can do to me. Now let's go into heat of combat. There will be more of them. I forgot to equip my firework, but that's okay. And you can see I, I am able to one-shot them thanks to the magic effect and as well health regeneration from hitting them in VATS with this shotgun. I mean health regeneration with work even if I don't hit in VATS but as you can see I will not be able to do damage. This magic work only in VATS. But you don't actually even need too much AP and if you are a blooded build then you already wearing an yielding armor then this shouldn't be an issue. And yeah, I kill all those super mutants and I didn't lose health like too much at all. And what you should know why it's happening and why it's not so good with other weapons than a shotgun. It's because in case of shotgun, it's firing eight pellets and every single pellet works with vampire effect. Therefore, from one hit, what? This one refused to die and doing this weird stuff or now he's dead. Therefore, every pellet is healing you. Every shot is like eight shots from other weapon. Then shotguns are the way to go for me because you save ammo and very easy kills regardless of your build. You don't need to invest any perks. That's the easiest way to do it at this moment. And about the life giver itself, should you use it or not? If you want to use anything else, you are free to do so. It's not necessary anymore. You can have it, but you don't need to. Although all the buffs to your max HP are still welcome, because what it's meant, your amount of health below Nerd Rage will go up together with max HP. Then at this moment for me, it's 66. I can have 66 health. If I will play without Endurance, without Life Giver, without any buff to my health, I will have around 1200 something and I will need to drop my health to like 40. And that's like 
Half of that would mean it's much easier to die than still. Max health buffs for bloodied builds are good. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not true. They are good. Not the best possible. Like, if you need Kempfen to increase duration of your merry mentals and earn more experience, go for it. But you need to know, health buffs are good. Now, about those of you that want to use power armor, I know that using VATs in power armor is not the best option because basically you will drain your fusion core and you have much less AP. Then what I recommend is like any heavy gun that's a vampire, like this one, Gauss minigun, this one is actually with a magic effect as well, but it's not necessary for everyday task, vampire, heavy guns are good enough, there is another vampire light machine gun, in this case that's a beast, and as well I have... I have a vampire minigun. This one actually happened to be magic by just accident. It's just so many magic effects that sometimes even if you don't aim for a magic weapon, you will get one. Then this is working really well. I will just show you quickly on those super mutants before someone else will kill them. Uh, this one happened to be a legendary. And as you can see, I'm getting shot, but in power armor it's even easier. It's why you really do not need as much healing. It doesn't need to be explosive heavy gun, it doesn't need to be anything like that. You just need any heavy gun that is a vampire. Maybe apart from Gatling gun can be a little bit slow, but to be honest, it is possible that even vampire Gatling gun will work. Just a kill time can be a little bit slower. Then that's the heavy gunner option. And there is probably like a group of you that is looking for something helpful that will still allow to use a bloodied weapons. There are options for that, not as powerful a uh, use of magic vampire shotgun or vampire heavy guns, but there are a working strategy for that. As well, I was testing a health regeneration from food like this one, Sweet Tattoos 2, and even though it seems to be a good idea and it's working quite well in regards how much health you are getting, it's 0.25 per tick, which means 5 times per second, what's over 1 health per second, but unfortunately when you are taking damage it's getting disabled and it's going back to regenerating your health like 10 seconds after you stop receiving damage and if there is no enemy shooting at you then it's not so good. It's still easy to craft, Sweet Tattoos 2 is super easy to craft, like there is no rare ingredients, but the downside is it doesn't work in combat. But what you can do in combat if you want to use your bloodied weapons, just have on some quick buttons whatever food, like I have in here glowing fungus soup, just have whatever food on your quick button, even if it's not healing too much. If you are Carnivore, of course, you don't want to have zoop, you want something else, but I'm herbivore and I have this glowing fungus zoop. What's good about this zoop, rat resistance from glowing fungus zoop, that stuck, as you can see, I have 560 now. I eat another zoop, I have 566. I eat another zoop and I have 616. If you don't want to micromanage rats too often from eating this food frequently, you can just swap your life giver for lead belly. This card will make all your food and drinks give you exactly zero rats. Then there will be no micromanagement of your rats if you are wearing power armor and you don't want to be bothered too often with rats going too high or too low. Then with that perk I can just eat zoop and nothing is happening to my health, it's 46 now. And even though the healing is not too high, like this zoop only give me 30 HP. In case of power armor, if emergency protocols, it's really all you need. And I like this glowing fungus zoop, mainly because it's giving me more and more rat resistance. It was pretty cool. I will not complain on that. And as you can see, I'm not taking too much damage from those super mutants. One of the reasons of that, I'm running empath, and that's basically in power armor, that's all you need. Class Freak with Empath and being on a team, on any public team, and you are good. As you can see, I didn't even took too much damage. My healing for, from Sweet Tattoos 2 kicked in and I have my health back. Then in many cases for Power Armor users, this Sweet Tattoos 2 or some other food on Quick Button and you can keep running with your bloodied weapon, there is no problem, I know. 
There's not as easy and life giver speed demon combo in before, but it's still not too hard. We cannot complain. It's not too hard. If you know what you are doing, you shouldn't have any problem, even if you will get swarmed by enemies. Another option that is worth to mention, it's born survival. Even though you can be afraid that you will lose all your stim packs by equipping that, crafting diluted stims is super easy. Where your health is capped by your rats, like my at this moment is at 44, this born survival will not trigger because you cannot get any more healing. You can see my aid, my steam pack diluted, I have two, and we can wait and wait here and nothing will happen to those steam packs. And the spare card is using your diluted steams first and then your regular steams and then your super steams. Then you clearly see it was more than 20 seconds and nothing is happening. But if my health will drop below what I have now, when it's capped, if something will happen to my health, this steam pack will get automatically triggered. What's especially good if you are going for the harder fight, like for everyday farming, I will say food is good enough. But if you're going for any harder fight or like that, you see, this guy kicked me was surprise attack and my steam pack triggered and now I'm got healing and someone broke piece of my power armor. That's not nice. And another steam pack will not trigger unless someone will hit me again. Then if you are not getting hit, if you are hitting first and no one get to you, you will not waste a steam pack. But in case something will hit you like this guy, you see my steam pack was used straight away. And it's very easy to get too many steam packs. That's why I recommend to sometimes maybe use it when you need. It's just one perk point and it can help you a lot. And this one does not even want to fight me, you see? It's running away. Now he changed his mind and trigger another stream. Yeah, 20 seconds is quite low down time. Then you will have steam pack, auto steam pack ready almost all the time. And if you combine diluted steams with first aid that you can equip under intelligence, with this perk, then those diluted steams will keep you alive all the time. There will be like no way to die, even though you'll be using a bloodied weapon and on very low health in power armor. Especially useful if you will get hit by a surprise poison. If you found out a different solution that you are using now, since the life giver speed demon combo was removed, definitely let me know. I'm interested in what you are using, guys. That's what I'm using. I shared with you what I'm using. Mostly I'm just using whatever from food or my vampire shotgun. But sometimes when it's really needed for a tough fight, I mean, I was hoping that colossal problem will be here and it's why I figured out how to deal with it. The bone survival, first aid, a lot of steams bloodied weapons on the ready, everything, but it's just resting in my stash and I'm just fighting Scorch Bisqueen. I don't even need this healing then. Yeah, that's the that's the case at this moment. But anyway, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.